Hey, you gotta let that fly, baby. Every one of those you got with your feet set, let them fly. He's the man who delivered for his team and this country. Canada, the NBA title is yours. Nick Nurse, now an honorary Canadian darling after bringing an NBA championship to Toronto. It was, by the way, just his first season on the job. The culmination of a three-decade journey. From small towns across Europe to the minor leagues in the U.S. It was a hard road to the pinnacle of basketball, something Nurse covers in his memoir, released today. But like the rest of us, not much prepared him for this year. The fans don't know what's going on. We don't know what's going on. The game tonight has been postponed. A pandemic that stopped the game, then a moment that shook off. In July, when the NBA restarted and the Raptors arrived in Orlando, the team's response was crystal clear. Pretty tired and sick to my stomach to have to sit up here and talk about this again. Nick Nurse has a lot to do and there's more to come. We caught up today in the 2020 virtual. Hello. How you doing? So, you know, head coach of Raptors, you coach Canada's national team, your great-grandparents are from Ontario, and we're just wondering, why don't you just seal the deal and become a Canadian? 37 million of us would probably be completely cool with that. Yeah, I think uh, I love everything about Canada. I think that's probably in the, in the works. Um, we'll see what happens. So, no, no question, I love it here. You, you haven't by chance started a process, have you, to become a Canadian? Not yet, not yet, but the conversations are started. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I, I think still, if you ask Canadians, and particularly Torontonians, that, you know, to choose the moment of the 2019 season, you know what I'm going to say. It's, it's, you know, the, the buzzer beater, Game 7, Kawhi. But what I didn't realize until I read your book is how much you had going on for you behind the scenes. You had... You had a newborn. It was like a week old. You went home to change diapers after the buzzer beater. <laughs> Can you give us a sense of, of what that whole time was like for you? Yeah, I mean, you know, you just kind of take it as it comes, right? That was that was part of part of my life at at the time. Um, we worked it out really good. We 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 uh, had Rocky on an off day, right? <laughs> I think uh, we went in there about eight o'clock uh, the night before the game, and and uh, I was back home about 11 a.m. the next day, and I I took a nap from about 11 to four and went to the arena. I think it was like a nine or 9:30 game that night, and and I think we won four in a row after after Rocky came to join us. So uh, just taking it in stride and. You know how it is. You got to do what you got to do sometimes. Um, you know, this image on the cover of your book, you know, you've got the suit, you're on the sidelines, you're shouting at something or you're pacing, uh, and then you have these glasses. And I'm, I think it's kind of a, an amazing and lovely story about why you wear your glasses courtside because you don't actually need them anymore. Mm -mm. No, I, I, uh, my, my, I think it was my second practice as a Toronto Raptors assistant. Uh, I got a, a ball flew and hit me right in my glasses. I was wearing them and they shattered all over the place. And, and uh, I realized I probably better get LASIK so I don't have to wear glasses during practice on the court because I was out there banging around with the players a little bit. And then we went to our first preseason game and after the game, uh, my mom was calling my phone. My sisters were calling, but my mom called. And I said, Mom, what's the matter? And she said, how come you weren't at the game? And I said, oh, I was. She goes, well, I didn't see you. And I said, oh, Mom, I forgot. I, I didn't. Um, I got LASIK, so I don't wear my glasses anymore. And she said, you put those glasses back on <laughs> so, I can, so I can find you when I watch the games on television. So I said, okay, Mom, I'll go, I'll go buy some uh, some fake ones are just now I just say they're a fashion statement but we wore them for my mom and then we just keep it going that way and I'm sorry I know I know you lost her uh er, earlier um but but you still keep them on yeah that's just part of my I think it's part of my uh my get up for a game now so make I, sure she can spot me oh yeah she'll always be able to find you no matter yeah. where she is Learning seems to matter a lot to you, and it's kind of amazing that you're in the process of getting your PhD, and I'm sure you're bracing for people one day calling you Dr. Nurse. Um, and I, I'm wondering if you could tell me what your thesis is. Yeah, I'm doing a thesis. I think it's really critical, first of all, that um, myself and our players 
use our platforms to impact our communities. And that's really what I'm doing my thesis on, <laughs> hoping to get it done by the end of the year. <laughs> wow. And learn a lot that I can pass on to the players, yeah. Did any of that prepare you for 2020? Because not, not just the pandemic and the bubble, but you know, the, the horror of what happened in the United States and the George Floyd killing. I mean, so many of the players were in a lot of pain. Yeah, and I think, and I think you gotta first and foremost care about them as people. Right? It has nothing to do with basketball or the job or winning or losing. It's just like, hey, how are you? And well, how do you feel? And I was pretty shocked, really, at the um, amount of our players that shared stories about run-ins that they had with law enforcement, you know, like with weapons aimed at them or put to their head or whatever, you know, when they were growing up or whatever. So is real for these guys. I mean, you know, it's it's mm -hmm. really real and I guess I guess I probably learned that. You know, I that stories I hadn't they hadn't shared with me before. And um, again, it brings it closer to home for you. And did anybody have a discussion about why there are so many white coaches in the NBA? I mean, more now than there used to be. I think it's two thirds of coaches are white. Like is it does anybody wrap their head around why that is? Well, I think that there was a lot of people discussing that. I mean, I just think that um, people have to be more open-minded. We have to give these guys more chances. We have to bring them, you know, I feel like part of my responsibility is to, is to develop my young coaches. And um, I need to make sure they're ready to, to do these jobs well when they're given a chance. Of all the things you get involved with, I was sort of half expecting you to have that jersey that says vote today because every time I see see you recently you, you know you, you're telling people come on vote and I'm wondering beyond the democratic duty of it what is driving you to to make this your you know use your platform for this right now well I think that um, I was looking for some way I could help and make an impact I don't know I just wish there was a little bit more collectiveness it's like it's like it's like a team you know when you're when you're coaching a team you want your team to be together and I wish there was a little bit more togetherness yeah. as well going on in the United States right now well listen as as a Canadian thank you for giving us so much um, no uh, so much to cheer about and you gave us something to cheer about this year too I mean it you know we all wanted to repeat but but to be excited and it, for it to be so close was like one of the few joys we've had this year. So thank you for that. You're welcome.